visiting the St. God, St. John of God area in McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania. When the church was constructed, it was called the St. Mary, Mary's Help of Christians Church. It was a Roman Catholic church that was mostly a German population. Uh, at the same time, there were other churches. There was an Italian church, an Irish church, a Polish Catholic church, and of course a Byzantine church here in the town. And since then, all those churches have been merged, and thus the, the renaming of the parish St. John of God. fathers in uh, the turn of the century to, to develop a plan. This would be the third church building for this parish. Uh, the second on this site, the first church was further away. In 1901, the, the uh, cornerstone was laid. And we can see this behind the hedge here when we go up the steps. The church has three main doors, tri a triumphal entry with arches. The style is um, is called Flemish Gothic, and the church is modeled after the Cologne Cathedral in Cologne, Germany. So if you go to a website and view the exterior of the church, you'll think, oh, that's just like the Cologne church. On the inside, it's very different. We're going to go up the steps now. You'll notice that there's twin towers, and there's uh, uh, stained glass windows all the way up the, on both towers that go up to the, the clock tower. These are actually clock towers and there's bells in the tower above. The access to those towers is through the uh, second floor organ gallery. It's not an easy access, so we're not gonna visit that site today. The church is constructed of brick that is faced to look like stone on the outside. And it has a patina on here from the years and years of uh, the mills, soot from the mills. The pillars are made of rose granite, and the, the base and the capitals are all made of molded concrete, made to look like stone, but that's what the, the cause for the deterioration is that this is just concrete and not stone and needs to be re re recast because it's all just peeling away. And the same with the arches. These are the original doors. They need to be refinished and, and restored. Now we're going to enter into the vestibule. While we're in the vestibule, we're going to turn around and view the windows above the three tympanum entrance. There's the Sorrowful Mother, the Resurrection Cross, and then Jesus with his crown of thorns representing his passion over this third door. This door over here leads into a uh, stair tower, into the uh, left bell tower in front of the church. And this is also the access to the uh, organ or choir balcony. Only the choir uses that. Inside, is the stained glass window representing the patron saint of choir, choir musicians. And then going up, you'll see just stained glass, just colored glass, but without any uh, figures. I'm trying to get the name of the, can't find the name of the saint. And this Dominic, St. Dominic Savio is the name of this saint with the cross. And this window here is a, is a more contemporary stained glass. It replaced something that was lost from damage. And we're going to go back into the vestibule. And we're going to cross the vestibule and go into what was originally the baptistry. Before Vatican II, of course, the, ba the baptistry was always back in the uh, narthex, in the vestibule of the church, because it was the first uh, rite of 
passage into the Catholic faith. So as we pass through this door, switch on. This, uh, to become ADA compliant, we've added two restrooms. If these restrooms weren't here, there was a stained glass window here of St. Barbara, patron saint of architecture. But that window has been lost from the inside. Here is would have been the baptismal font in the center, which is now because of Vatican II uh, Council has been moved to the front. We have Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist with two adoring angels to the left and to the right. Now this is used as the bride's room for weddings. So it still has a, a, a liturgical use, the sacrament of marriage. We're going to turn around and go back into the vestibule and then into the sanctuary, into the nave itself. Again, in the triumphal entries into the worship space, there are uh, leaded glass windows, the Alpha and the Omega, IHS, which is uh, Jesus Christ's Savior, and again, the Alpha and the Omega. Now we move into the nave, and the first thing that, there's two things that attract you Im immediately is the beauty of the stained glass windows. And the second one is the fact that there are no columns or no pillars supporting the roof in this church. This church was built in between 1901, the cornerstone laid in 1901. The church was completed in 1905. And because of the use of steel, a steel uh, skeleton, they were able to take the weight off of the roof in the pillars and move it to the walls using the steel frame. And so we have this be these beautiful uh, sculpted plaster arches made of plaster and wood that there are no columns so that everyone in this sanctuary, everyone in this nave has a full view of the sanctuary up front. The stained glass windows to the left and to our right all depict uh, the blessed mysteries of uh, the Virgin Mary. We have, starting at the front transept window, we have the baptism of Jesus. Or excuse me, the, the birth of Christ, the nativity. To the left are the three magi, and to the right are the shepherds with their sheep. The next window is first uh, tall window here in the nave, we have the presentation of Jesus in the temple with Joseph and two turtle doves as a sacrifice. The next window represents the flight into Egypt after it was, after Jesus appeared, or the God appeared to Joseph in a dream to take the, the Christ child out of, out of uh, Bethlehem. Next we have Jesus at 12 preaching in the temple. There was a time when he broke away from his parents when they were in Jerusalem. He's found in the temple preaching eloquently. And this last window on this side of the, on the left, right side of the sanctuary would be uh, Jesus bidding his mother farewell as he begins his ministry at 30. Now we're going to follow on to this side. We have Jesus blessing the jugs of water and turning into wine at the marriage feast of Cana, one of his first miracles. We have Jesus being stopped on his way to his crucifixion and he, his mother, he comforts his weeping mother. Here we have the Virgin Mary with the Christ child giving to St. Dominic and St. Catherine of Siena the rosary. And this is Mary's assumption into heaven. You see she is surrounded by angels that are bearing her up into the holy temple of heaven. Above the left transept we have a stained glass window depicting Jesus 
with the little children that brings to mind that scripture of Jesus, suffer not the little children that come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In the windows to the left and to the right, here we have the four um, fathers of the church, of the Roman Catholic Church. We have St. Gregory on the right, on the left we have St. Jerome. On this side, we have on the left, St. Augustine, or Augustine, some would say, and St. Ambrose. Again, these are the, the founding pillars of our faith. As we come around and view the sanctuary itself, you'll see that the altar is contemporary. Somewhere in the 1960s, after the Vatican Council II, some major changes that happened, of course, was the moving of the baptistry up to the sanctuary. Also, they got rid of the large uh, suspended uh, pulpit and dropped it down to the floor with a on the surface, so it would be on the uh, platform here. Also, the altars, this, the Mary altar, the Joseph altar, and the high altar have all been, have been changed. The original uh, Carrera marble back wall has been removed taken out and new altars and back walls have been put in. The only thing that's original on this are the candlesticks and the uh, altar itself where the um, tabernacle is located is still the original high altar. With the back of course is changed. The windows across here are Mary receiving the crown and she becomes queen of heaven. This side here, we have the Annunciation. This is actually the very beginning of the story where the angel comes to Mary and says, Fear not, Mary, for you will become the mother of God. In the apse, this is the semicircular part of the, of the um, sanctuary itself. We have the four gospel writers, Matthew, in the order of their writing, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and above them are their, are their liturgical symbols, the man, the lion, the bull, and the eagle. Finally, we turn around and we look at the organ or choir uh, gallery, and there we have a magnificent rose window. In the center of the rose window is Saint Cecilia. She's the patron saint of sacred music. Of course, she's playing an organ, and around her it says, Praise only to God. Around the rose window, in all the petals that form the rose, are a choir of angels, and she is directing them, singing glory to God in the highest. And on both sides are the, the uh, case of the original organ. Of course, the original organ is no longer operable. It is, they use an electronic organ now, but they've kept the organ and its pipework is intact. Also, the pews have been changed. The pews are not the original pews. But you'll notice from the front, from the back of the church to the front, there's a slight slope, about three feet, if you measure from the back door to the front to the altar. We have, we've dropped three feet, and that's called the rake of, a, of the platform, so that people at the back have equal access in, in sight lines to the front of the church is the people in the front. So that concludes our tour today of the St. John of God Parish, St. Mary Help of Christians, Roman Catholic Church.